Salam, how are you? Oh, how are you doing? I'm super excited. <laughs> oh, and me too. I am too. So lovely to join you here in this live and for us to have this uh, opportunity to discuss such an important topic. I know. Um, My name is uh, Dr. Samina Shaheem. Um, I'm a cross-cultural psychologist. I'm a learning and development specialist, uh, and I teach in, around the subjects of organizational behavior and leadership. I've been working in the space of education and education management for close to 25 years now, uh, working at different universities, at undergraduate, postgraduate, and supervising PhDs and things like that in at different institutions. Um, I am incredibly passionate about people and behaviors and thoughts and feelings and how we can better understand those things. So from a psychological perspective and um, from a cross-cultural perspective, when I say cross-cultural psychology, that means I am I'm a psychologist that looks at situations or looks at behaviors from a culture specific point of view mm -hmm. and so i try to you know meet uh, people like yourself who are like-minded individuals and use the extra little time that i have or make time oh. for social media to try and reach a wider audience so that we can answer questions and and make life a little bit easier on a day-to-day -day basis for people so that's a little bit about me thank you very much my name is Solmas. I am a life coach. My spe specialty is in relationship. I love the field of psychology. That's the area I have been reading and studying, self studying for more than a de decade. I love it. I love knowing uh, different people with different personality and helping them to make a better uh, quality of their lives. And uh, I'm an author, I am a speaker, I'm a podcaster for the, since spring I started a podcast, it's in Farsi, but, and I speak about the part of our communications that we miss a lot, and it affects the quality of our lives a lot. And I'm blessed to be a mother too, that's a highlight in my life. <laughs> and that's it, that's it. I'm, I'm enjoying every bit of my life right now. Thank God. <laughs> Very good. Very and, good. Generating joy. Making sure you're designing a life that generates joy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that awesome. was good. The, the reason I chose this topic for today is the dilemma and challenges I see in my clients specifically, of course, in Persian community, a little bit more, a little bit more than others. I live in Canada. So it's a very multicultural um, country, of course. And I see how people have challenges when it comes to, to their boundaries. They don't know when to say no. They have so much confusions. And because mostly it's unspoken, they have, I call them, they just, <laughs> it happens in the relationships and they don't know what to do with it. That's why yeah. I ask you to join us and I'm very honored for that. So for my first, may I ask you my first golden question? Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> my first question is that, of course, let's start with the meaning of um, yeah. psychological boundaries. Yes. Yeah. Well, to begin with, so much you know, boundaries, setting boundaries will set you free. Let's start with this mindset. You know, when people often hear about boundaries, uh, they think that we're setting up barriers. And that's a very different distinction. Barriers are very different to boundaries. Boundaries actually bring you closer to people. They, it's a signifier to individuals it's it's a signal that i care enough about you and i want to keep you in my life and therefore we need a ne renegotiation of the terms of this relationship wow. so that we can stay closer together so that we can be more in love so that we can play better together so that we can have a fun together without all of the 
you know, negative things that might come about as a result of not having boundaries, right? So remember, we're setting ba boundaries, not barriers. Boundaries can help us uh, retain a sense of identity, of personal space, and they're there um, to, to make your relationship easier, okay? So when people set boundaries, it's their attempt to continue the relationship with those individuals, wow. right? And personal wow. boundaries. That's very powerful. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and you know, they, these are the limits and the rules that we set for ourselves and for the relationship. Um, with healthy boundaries, you might say no occasionally uh, in those relationships, but you're not saying no to the relationship. You're saying no to a particular request yes. or a particular aspect, a tiny part um, of the relationship. And, and that's why it's important to um, make sure that we understand the difference. And doing this is imp imperative. Why? Because it helps us better manage our thoughts mm -hmm. and to m regulate our emotions to keep us more functional and healthy when we have these relationships, okay? So let me give you an example. A friend wants us to go somewhere with them. Let's say a friend of yours, Solmaz, Maryam calls you up and says, Solmaz, let's go together for a weekend to the cabin in Montreal and you need to come with me and we want to go, okay? Okay. And Solmaz is excited and she wants to go, but at the same time, she's got a million and one things that is happening. Okay, she's got lots of things um, that she's going through. If you, ha if Solmas hasn't had enough practice establish and expressing boundaries, what happens is you go through so much anxiety and worry in your mind about what should I tell Maria? Should I tell her I can't come? Um, should I tell her I have a million and one things I need to do? Is she going to be upset? Is she going to make a big deal about this? What's going to happen? What should? How should I say it? So. Imagine all the energy you're utilizing, struggling with yourself to try and figure out how am I going to let Mariam down easily by telling her I may not be able to go, right? So all this worry and anxiety leading up to the moment you have that conversation with Mariam, you speak to her, you fumble through it, you apologize need needlessly a hundred times, uh, you seem very weak and sometimes people lie and come up with silly excuses just because they can't be honest which makes things worse right and then you hang up the phone with maria and now you're dealing with another week of anxiety and worry of did i say the right thing was i too harsh was i too soft maybe i shouldn't have said that what if Mariam starts talking to Jennifer about me not going with her? And then what are they going to think of me? Am I a bad friend? Mm. So much, John. And the that feeling. Is, yeah, the feeling. It's I exhausting. Will have. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Tell me, what is the feeling you have? I, I, guess, I guess for many people, okay, I'm going to talk for myself. The feeling that, mm. oh, the moment when I said that, she paused. What, what was that pause because uh, she felt she she found out that I lied or or did I was it, what were I harsh there or could could it could I do something else and that's overthinking and thinking and thinking negative yes exactly overthinking and ruminating and you know coming up with excuses creates bigger problems but the truth. And boundaries set you free. Here's the paradox. Here's the irony of boundaries. People think boundaries will keep us in and isolated. In fact, when you have boundaries and you can be truthful about them, they set you free. And you never have to worry about what did I say? How did I say it? For what reason did I say it? Oh my God, that's totally different. Like the way that your, your view is day and night. Day and night. Right. And it's just, you know, sometimes it's, I'm not saying anything new, Solmas. I'm just putting it in a different way and a different perspective, right? And sometimes we just need to look at things through a new lens, through a different lens. And you think, okay, that's, that's possible, you know? But 
here's the thing when you don't have boundaries it's no it's it's almost like you're no longer able to distinguish between what i think is right to do and what others think is right for me to do okay mm. so i'm stuck between understanding who am i what do i think is right to do in this circumstance versus should i be the version that the other person thinks i should be in this situation so exactly. if you do that too often and for too long what happens your sense of identity your character your personality becomes fragmented it gets pulled into different directions based on other people's demands their expectations and we lose sight of who we are what's your core what are your values what are your expectations what are your standards exactly I and in order for us to understand it. yeah yeah right we ignore it in fact so in 2013 um harvard uh the, their school of public health they released a paper that said that if you when we don't have clear boundaries and you bottle up strong emotions mm -hmm. okay and the two strongest emotions that are related to boundaries are guilt and resentment okay these are cousins that always have to be kept happy you you need an an imbalance if you do too much you feel resentful if you don't do enough you feel guilty right so in terms of our association with other people guilt and resentment always has to be kept in check you know when people say oh relationships should be unconditional no my friend there's always conditions <laughs> to relationships that <laughs> whoever <my> said <laughs> that it's every relationship has a certain type of condition and that's okay that's okay it doesn't mean that we can't love with incredible strength and uh, intensity it doesn't mean anything but in order so if you're feeling resentful if you're feeling resentment and you can't express it at the source because you feel so much you're giving much more to this relationship than you get Excellent. and you don't have boundaries and now i'm feeling resentful and i have nowhere to put this resentment what do i do i throw it inside right and when you throw it inside and you don't process those emotions bottled up emotions have the chance of causing premature death 30% more you're at 30% more risk of premature death and you're at the higher risk of being diagnosed with cancer it increases by 70%. Oh my god. There's a direct correlation from bottling up emotions that are not being expressed to your physical health. And it all starts with thinking, assuming if we set boundaries, yes. we are putting the other person down. correct correct it all Versus starts with that just, we are just make, making the relationship stronger right yes absolutely it's an incorrect assumption that if i say no if i set boundaries i'm going to get rejected i'm going to get abandoned i'm going to get disapproval from them yeah there's and there, right and there's a number of reasons you know why some people feel that way so it was for example depending on which culture you're from right if you come from a culture in which you're taught that saying no or disagreeing is wrong that you always have to kind of agree and put on this public face of approval um parental influence what did your parents teach you what kind of messages did you get from your parents did they have boundaries with their family members you know you 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 grow up observing all these things and then your your own personality your life experiences and then we get into your sense of awareness okay oh. how much self awareness you have 
how well you know your needs, how well you're able to differentiate. And I have a quiz that I want us to do together. Yeah. But before we do that, you know, I want to ask you, you said in your experience, uh, you deal with people who raise this issue of not being able to have boundaries. Tell me, what are the most common kind of boundary challenges that they have? Um, that's a golden key uh, to know what is, what, what is causing that mindset of uh, having or not having boundaries. For um, people who I work with, it's mostly how to say no, where to say no, or when they receive a comment that is unsolicited, they haven't requested, yes. and it's very, for them, it's like basically intruding. Um, yes. What kind of intrusion, yes. any kind of intrusion, they, they don't know yes. what to do. Because yes. after Shahin, in, in the culture I'm coming from as Iranian, it is rude many times, in many uh, times, it's rude to say, no, I don't want to drink tea. Mm -hmm. It starts with yeah. drinking tea even, on that taroffing thing we yeah. have. It, yeah. is, it goes, and you well mentioned it, it's, um, it goes because we don't, they don't know how, when and how to put themselves first. Yes. I don't know. We we have challenges regarding to knowing that what is my value here? Yeah. yeah. Is it aligned with right. values? And remember mm. you did um, in one of More Than Mind uh, sessions, you talked about the mindset, the book. I love that book. I love that. Yes. Carol Dweck. And Carol Dweck. Yeah. Mindset. Yes. It, it is the fixed mindset we sometimes have that saying Correct. no is equals to all this yeah. list. Right, right. And but we are you see what on it. We're fixated, I know, in, in many ways. But you know what's a, a contradiction here, so much um, that needs to be pointed out. On one hand, uh, you're not allowed or you're not, you know, you can't say, no, I don't want more tea. Uh, but at the same time, people in our culture feel very um, entitled to, for example, the minute they see you, to say, oh, you lost so much weight, oh, or, oh, you gained so much weight, or, you know, how is it that it's okay uh, for you to comment on my body uh, when I don't even know you uh, that, that well, right? You know, to establish a boundary, to say that, I'm sorry, but I really didn't ask you <laughs> about oh, for you to comment. <laughs> In, you know, uh, on my body me, in front of other people exactly you reminded me of this thing with my husband my husband is not iranian so what in the beginning of us dating one day she, he came to me and said you know what you guys have so much so much conflict in your relationships i'm like why he said you are tar offing at the entrance door for 15 minutes no please you go first you go first you go first yeah. and then that's how much you go in that side or please eat more, yeah. please eat more. And then you ask the people in your culture sometimes <laughs> ask the most private questions ever. <laughs> like, how much did you pay for this house, you know? What's your how mortgage? Much, how much is what? your salary? He's like, excuse yes. me. <laughs> yes, yes. And and these are, these are areas in which, you know, one needs to have boundaries, oh, yeah. not about tea and food and, you know, things oh. like that. I think, um, I, I, I think it's very important to, so going back to what you were saying with your colleagues um, or the people that, the clients that you talk to, I think that, you know, there's, there's a wonderful term called microaggression, mm -hmm. right? Microaggression. So these are microaggressive so, so when it's macro aggression, that's more systemic and it's bigger, it's, it's clearer, it's tangible, it's obvious. But when it's micro, it kind of sounds like this. Wow, so you know, you're, 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 you're very, um, you're very smart for, for being a Middle Eastern. Oh boy. You know, this, this is a kind of like, Sorry, what do you mean? <laughs> How did you put that in the same sentence? Or, 
or or for example you know you're quite you're quite what was one that i heard um along the way uh, you're really creative for a woman oh my god i got that a lot yeah. <laughs> yeah. and you think to yourself my goodness that's not not only inappropriate it's rude and you're crossing a boundary that is just you know and and it's and it's that moment so much when you need to have micro responses to micro aggression and the best way to handle these situations is not wait till next week next month you know uh, till it happens again but right there and then for you to have the courage to say excuse me i didn't appreciate that comment what do you mean by that exactly that's that that's really inappropriate but anyways what were we talking about like you know gorgeous, absolutely cool gorgeous covering the awkwardness in between that was amazing oh right there God. doesn't have to be there doesn't have to be any awkwardness why do we not respond to microaggression because we're worried about the awkwardness awkwardness that we're pause. worried about what that the, pause that, the silence the oh pause the you know but no you're in the driving seat you say that was inappropriate i don't appreciate that but anyway so let's continue what what were we saying <laughs> that was amazing i should do that yeah. just a couple of well, times <laughs> i can tell you i i'm in these situations on a very regular basis um and having to you know really? have spent yes, many uh, you know reaching leadership position so much and uh, and having working with predom predominantly you know in male dominated societies and things like that you're constantly kind of pushing <laughs> you know elbows to try to like get your way to work your way to you know oh. where you want to go so it's not easy but it's fun it's i i look at it as 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 you know you're you're modeling the way you're breaking ground uh you're paving the path for exactly. uh certain behaviors that have to be recognized as appropriate or inappropriate. So, you know, in terms of what you were saying about your clients for our listeners here, let's break it down to so there's different types of boundaries. There's physical boundaries. Mm -hmm. What you feel comfortable with in terms of touch, in terms of bodily contact, you know, in terms of uh let's say Uh, for example space. personal space let's say someone stands next to you and puts their arm around their waist as you, they're talking to you maybe you don't feel comfortable with that right um you can establish that boundary by moving out of the way um or kind of removing their hand very nicely you know and just kind of signifying that you're not comfortable with that touch right um so we've got physical we've got sexual boundaries in intimate relationships and this again from in some cultures for them it's unheard of what do you mean but he's my husband or this is my wife my property uh, my property it's right what do you mean if 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 uh if i don't want to have sex oh, um i don't i i cannot have sex right so this idea of um oh but i'm married and uh, i should be available for that sexual experience because that's my wife or that's my husband and so it comes with the relationship well of course not you know it, it, no one should oblige you or force you or put you in a situation to have sex if you're not in the right mindset or if you're not um in the right mood exactly forget exactly. about mindset you know it, it can just be uh, a a mood thing that needs to be looked at so sexually within your romantic relationships you should talk about what you're comfortable with what you like what you don't like and uh you know how you would like that to play out in your relationship there can be emotional boundaries and this refers to people's feelings you might you might not be comfortable sharing certain things you know some people are very pushy about tell me how you feel and you know what happened and they want details, details. and things like that details maybe about it you know and maybe at a particular point in time you're not comfortable giving those details and therefore later on you might talk about it or 
you, what you consider to be sacred or private has to be decided by you um, before anybody else can, you know, do that. And then you've got financial boundaries, right? And as you guessed it, this one is all about money, um, your spending, your expenditure, your investments, your uh, whether, you know, you lend money to people if they ask you for money, whether you think it's appropriate, um, the rules of uh, the, the, uh, around if we do decide to get financially involved with somebody and the boundaries that you have around there, these are the kinds of things that can cause lots of problems in relationships if you don't discuss it. You know, people say, oh, I trusted them. We had a gentleman handshake, you know, on this situation. <laughs> Even the contracts on paper don't mean anything. <laughs> Correct. Please you know, like and of course. And so much, whenever people say to me, never do business with family, right? It's not that family can't do business together. It's, it's because family, families don't know how to have clear boundaries and have clear contracts to avoid the mess and the situation that happens later on. Exactly. It's not that families can't work together. Work together. <laughs> In fact, there is so much yeah. emotions and there, there is conflict of interest. That's the thing, conflict of interest. And you, right, owe, right. you feel that you owe that person, to your sister or your father, till end of the life. Like, that's why in bank, I used to work in bank. Uh, there yes. was grounded rules. There's grounded rules that you cannot see any of family members. Anyone same, even last name, you cannot give service. Done. Right, right. Conflict of interest, right. It can cause problems in, it, in that way. Can't it? Um, absolutely. And so... You know, if you have, and what we're talking about are not rigid boundaries. We're talking about boundaries, again, that are supposed to set you free. If you have rigid boundaries, um, that could be more manipulative. And people yeah. might have rigid boundaries as a way to control people. Oh, interesting. They play games with them. You know, I'm not going to call you because I'm going to make you wait and make you think about oh. why I'm upset with you, um, and so you can suffer in silence. So it's unspoken. Uh, it, these are nonverbal, right? Non and if someone, yeah, if, if someone wants to manipulate a situation okay. mm -hmm. um, by creating those kind of boundaries, it's it's not it's not good. And these people seem very detached. They have fewer closer relationships, and 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 they have a difficulty maintaining achieving maintaining and sustaining relationships but if you have more loose or open boundaries uh you know how to say no at the right time in the right place you don't overshare uh again too quickly you know there there's a context that you take into account about when is it good to share and for what purpose um and then you know you don't you don't put other people first uh, and you don't aim to pe please or appease other people for the fear of being rejected or um, having a better sense of self or self-esteem mm -hmm. simply because you think you're going to get the approval or the acceptance of other individuals, right? So yeah. very, very important um, for us to know that. Now, I said to you, it would be fun for us to um, do a quiz. And there's a couple of quiz questions that I would like us to go through. But if we could, could we just open up the comments for a second? 150%. Let's open up the comments for a second. And then what I want to do is... I want people in the chat box, please. I want you to participate here with us. In the chat box, can you write which boundaries do you find most difficult keeping? Is it boundaries with family? Is it boundaries with your intimate relationship, husband or wife? Is it boundaries at work? Um, is it financial boundaries? Tell us, those of us who are here, 
which boundaries do you find most difficult to maintain? Can you see some of the answers? They're typing. They're typing. Family. They're typing. Okay, because I'm husband, curious to see. Boundaries with my parents. Actually, pa family, they mean parents. And parents, uh, immediate families are yeah. one of the most difficult. Uh, yeah. My mom, my mom, yeah. <laughs> Her mother. Yeah. Parents. <laughs> parents. Is parents a, is a, well, a lot of parents. Family, see? Cultural boundaries. Cultural boundaries. Parents. It's mostly yeah. parents. Parents are number it's, one. Okay, spouse mom. and parents. Okay, right. Most difficult for okay, and another question I have for our friends: When you have difficulty establishing boundaries with the people that you've mentioned, how does it make you feel when you repress your own feelings and you do what they want you to do? How does that make you feel? What's the feeling that you struggle with? So the, our, our listeners, when you don't establish boundaries and you adhere to what they want you to do against your own will or judgment, how does that make you feel? Shame. Look at that. Yeah. Tired. Yeah. Upset. Angry. Right. Yeah. Okay. There's those angry. Angry. Oh. Resident. You see, yeah, absolutely. Feeling yes, them, sad, sad, guilty and shame, unimportant. unimportant. This is this is wonderful. Please keep it. Good. And our dear Sarah, she guilt and yep, yeah, she said uh, more guilt, mm -hmm. more guilt, weakness, weakness, guilt, resentments. Sana is fantastic. You need to follow Sana coaching. She's lovely. Uh, resentment absolutely exhausted that's a good one yeah. exhausted it's a really good one yep okay so keep those coming now as your th lack of self-love look at that inner talk mm -hmm. revenge absolutely oh that's, that's really cool frustrated yes that's that's very true thank you i i, I can't tell you how grateful i am that you're sharing uh, with us here. With your comments, we learn uh, as well when you share. Okay, so what we have here is a quiz. And as I'm asking these questions, I want our friends to answer. Okay, so let's do this together, everybody. We're going to do a quiz, and each question has A, B, or C. Okay, I want you to simply say A, B or C in the chat box, and let's see. And then when you're answering, ladies and gentlemen, please answer the real you, not the ideal you. Don't give the answer you think Solmas and I want to hear. Exactly. Give us the real answer. Because when you're, when you're honest with yourself, that's when growth happens. Okay, let's be honest. So let's go. So much. Your mother invites you to come over for dinner, uh, but you have other plans. Would you, A, tell her that you are busy and suggest a more convenient time? B, change your plans to avoid upsetting your mom? C, feel obligated to try and do both dinner with your mom and your other plans too? I used so, to be B, a, B or C. I used to be B for the longest time. Now I'm A. <laughs> C now you're work A. With my family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, B doesn't work with your family. And in the true spirit of Carol Dweck and growth mindset, I'm going to say B doesn't work with your family yet. No, no, okay? no, no. Remember. C doesn't work for my family. To, to ah, go back okay. at the same time. No, you should go okay. either this way or that way. It used, or that to, way. Be, I it see. used to be B. Nowadays, it's always yeah. A. A, it is. Okay. I oh. see. So let's see what people are saying. I used to okay. be B. Now I'm an A. Oh. So. Okay. I All will right. never forgive me if I cancel. Oh. She will never forgive me if I cancel. 
who won't forgive her? The mom? Mom, yeah. Okay, next question. Next question. Your spouse or the person you're dating or your significant other wants you to apologize for something you did, but you don't think you've done anything wrong. So imagine a friend, a boyfriend, girlfriend, or wife or husband is telling you, wants you to apologize, apologize for something you did, but you don't think you've done anything wrong. Would you avoid the discussion and cry on the shoulder of a friend or family member? B, apologize just to maintain the peace in the relationship? Or C, decline to apologize and ask for clarification instead? Talking about the problem with your friend to try and arrive at a solution. What would you do? <laughs> C. 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 Okay. So let me see. How many people said B? We have B. Shine is B. Surprise C. We have lots of C's. Right. Good. A. Okay. So from as you know, when we answer C, that means we've got you know, boundaries in this particular scenario. But if you just apologize to try and maintain the peace, mm -hmm. then what happens is that's when you, you don't have clear boundaries, right? Think about the biggest advice we have heard culturally, Solmaz John. Kutabia, kutabia, kutabia. And this, when I first heard this statement, I, I, I thought, be shorter? I translated to English, and it was what? Do you, what do you mean? Shrink yourself? Yeah, that shrink means, yourself. That means shrink yourself. It means be shorter, not be yourself. And and you know, I thought I thought what use? Why should I? I should be more visible in my relationship. I need to be not not to be smaller, not to be shorter, not to be more invisible, right? One needs to be more visible in relationships to be an equal partner so that you have an equal voice, so that you have an equal contribution to whatever you're engaging in. If it's not, if it's not balanced, then it feels out of place. Exactly. Right? And it, they, it so, goes like this. Like, kind of like, why don't you have the capacity to be a little bit more flexible. That's how and you know what that does in your face. It, and it is thrown. And that's why we call it gaslighting. Yeah. Okay. Because it diminishes your feelings. It takes away from what you're going through. Your pain and your hurt means nothing. And you should just suppress that. Die early and get cancer. Okay. Because you shouldn't have a voice in the relationship. What does that mean? What does that mean? No, that's not an option. We are going to change that. We are going to change communication yes. once and for all to make sure that you stay calm and concise and in a, in a fair and empathetic manner, you discuss these subjects. Exactly. I'm not saying raise your voice. I'm saying raise your words. Mm -hmm. As our dear Rumi, the poet, says, it's not thunder that grows flowers. It's the rain. Don't raise your voice. Raise your words. And when you raise your words, then you're able to be, you know, make a greater impact. Let's have another question. Your coworker is about to miss a deadline and begs your help for finishing a project, mm -hmm. okay? You're also under a deadline to finish your own project, so John, okay. okay? What would you do? First one, reply that you aren't available to help. I'm so sorry. A. B. Work overtime to attempt meeting both deadlines for yourself and for your coworker. Or C. Reply that you're busy and you feel really guilty uh, for not being able to help the other person. But in the future, if you, I have time, I will definitely help out. No, A, A it is. A, it is. There's no guilt. A, it is. The A, okay. A, it is. Okay. 
Let's see what our friends are going to do. So A, reply that you aren't available to help. Work overtime and do both for both people. Reply that you're busy. Okay, now here's when it gets interesting. I want those of my friends who said B and who answered B, and you know who you are, Fatty Dijun, there's, it was in there, and a couple of other people who answered B, and Saba answered B, and we have um, Arya answered B. Sorry, okay. Answer yep. B. You see how many Bs we've got? Okay. So what happens is the next time you have a deadline and you don't have time and you call that friend and you say, hey, I have a deadline and I can't finish this. Can you do this for me? And that person turns around and says, no, sorry, I'm too busy. You don't get it. What happens? Right? We feel like it's a punch in the gut. You're upset. You're disappointed. I do so much for this person. Last time I had deadlines myself, but I still help them. Yeah, I know. And your expectations go up unnecessarily. Exactly. And as Sarah said, you get pissed. Yeah. Of course you get pissed. Yes, absolutely. And your expectations have gone up. And therefore, what happens then, it starts impacting your relationship. But Solmas, that person has just been honest. Yeah, exactly. They've just been honest. Why should we get angry at them? Yeah. They are not doing something mm -hmm. for us that they are not capable of. And they're not right. talking behind us, saying that, how do no. you believe how she threw everything on my shoulder? No, my yes. life is blah, 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 blah. They're just yeah. honestly telling us it's not possible for me. That's it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Let's do another one with work. Let's say you're heading out of the door for a long-awaited vacation when your boss drops a task on your lap, okay? okay? Would you respond that you're unavailable to work on the task until you come back? Be a team player and postpone your trip one day so you can finish the task? Meet in the middle and to agree on the task while you're on your trip so that you can finish the work for them. This is, this is a tough one. Yeah. I have learned that if it's my time to rest and be away from work, it's my time to rest and be away from work. I'm not going to make my trip with work, no. Bravo. Bravo. I and you know what? I of time to learn yeah. that. Yes, yes. And you know what? This is a culture that needs to be established by the leadership of that company. Exactly. Okay? It needs to be established from bottom up. There's an excellent expression that says the fish rots from its head. Wow. And so if, yeah. you know, if you're sending emails to your colleagues and to your employees on the weekends, after work, and so on and so forth, you're sending the message that work-life ba balance and work-life integration is not important. Even if you say, hey, you don't need to answer me till Monday, mm -hmm. it still creates a situation exactly. in which, you know, the, it makes you worried about whether you answer or not, correct? So you've got to be careful with that. Let's do, I'll do one more question. Let's say your friend tells many inappropriate jokes at a party in front of different people and you feel offended. Mm -hmm. Would you cringe and look away hoping that she or he will notice that you're, you've been offended and unhappy? Will you pull him or her aside later and talk about your discomfort with what they said? Or C, say nothing because everyone seemed to laugh, so maybe I'm wrong. I would add D. I would bring it up to her attention in the same same uh, group of friends and saying that I don't feel comfortable. What if we talk about something else? So right there and then. Yeah. So as soon as that person is uh, telling the jokes, yeah. you would say right there and then? Yeah. Because if, if I'm in a group of people, among group of people, that I feel comfortable to be there, I should be comfortable to express my emotions, right? I'm yes. doing this the, nowadays. If it was 10 years ago, I would just hide myself and I would be 
over everything. Yes. And I would not even but talk I to her later on. Yeah, but I'm going to challenge you for a yeah. second. Remember, as Brene Brown always says, we don't always have to be right, but we always have to do the right thing. Yeah, exactly. If she or he has offended you in front of other people, is it right for you to do the same thing? Okay, my, my intention is not offending him. Maybe I should work on the wording then. No, yeah. my baby, you know how you said you you told me about the the pause and the silent in between maybe mm -hmm. I, yes. I i would use kind of a vocab that it doesn't offend her and yes. i could use some humor all i'm saying i'm not i would not take the time to be there Correct. when i'm not comfortable right. yeah i hear you what you're saying is this needs a response yeah now yeah because I'm I need to and it's close enough. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, right. So, so you said a response is necessary. If I'm comfortable and close enough to these people, I might say it right there and then. But if not, and this is where your antenna and your relationship management, your social management comes into play, that you'll be able to think about, is this the right time for me to say something in front of everyone? Or should I pull this person aside and say, I care enough yeah. for you and I have enough respect for you not to say it in front of everybody else, but, yeah. and this time I'll pull you aside. But if it happens again, I will confront you in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't like that. And, and that hurt me. Exactly. You know, your words really hurt me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And well, it depends. I guess it depends that. Uh, what kind of what group which group of people we are among right among of which group right. of people yes yes absolutely okay that was so good. now if we go into what i would like to do is oftentimes so much john i get the question and many people have here said families they've said relationships uh, they want examples, like setting boundaries is so far away from their psychological, everyday psychological um, repertoire, their everyday psychological behaviors, that they want to know what it looks like, you know, and what does it look like? What are some examples of uh, people in these different situations? But so now that we're talking about the workplace, let's start with that. Let's start, let's start with professional boundaries okay, okay? And, and please share any that you think are um, important as well if I've not named them so to begin with one of the first workplace boundaries you should establish okay and the earlier you do this and the more consistently you do this the more effective it will be mm -hmm. okay so first of all about establishing boundaries around work hours Okay, what is the working hour here? The written one and the unwritten one. Because the written one says nine to five, but I see people here till eight o'clock at night. What's going on? Exactly. Right? We need to figure out what is the culture about that and adhere to it, about weekends and holidays as well. Second of all, establishing clear boundaries around touch and space. Exactly. You know, like in regards with to, to colleagues and that includes when you're working with them it also includes when you're partying with them so one of the biggest is issues workplaces have is christmas parties or dinners or the functions that they have suddenly people become wild and reckless I and know. things happen at these parties uh <sighs> that are sometimes irretrievable i mean you know you can't unwind them you can't oh. rewind <laughs> what they're happened back, they're and back then to office the day after and then they're back into they're the awkward. office the day after right oh. so try and keep those boundaries whether you're in the office or you're in social settings because it can it can cause problems okay you need to have boundaries around your workload so you've got to have a good relationship with your manager to talk about your bandwidth if you're constantly given different projects and you can't handle all the work that you have, even if you can handle it so much, here's the thing. Don't let your strength become your biggest weakness at work. 
you've got to clearly establish boundaries and say, you know, I'm working on three, four things at the moment I can't, okay? One of the biggest boundaries we need to establish at work is interruptions, getting oh. interrupted. <laughs> okay, uh, can right? Can I take your time for one minute? One minute. Sure, sure. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm oh, yeah. saying a thing. <laughs> Oh, exactly. Yeah. I used but, to be interrupted but, a lot with one minute. But never a minute. Never. <laughs> it's never it's never a minute. It's never a minute, right? And you're lucky because you said one minute. Usually, you know, do you have a couple of seconds? Oh, that's just a couple of seconds. <laughs> it's, it's it's even you know more. There's no no way that it's gonna be a couple of seconds. And do you know, Solmas, that 30% of tasks that we engage in, if we're interrupted, they're abandoned. We don't go back to them. 30%. So if you were writing an important email and you got interrupted, you may never go, you may forget to do it because you were interrupted. So it's, and then it's very hard. It takes between five to seven minutes to gather our concentration again to get back into the work that we were doing. So it's significant, okay? And then, of course, we need to at work. Oh, so before we go on to the next one, let me tell you, I did a project with Google, and they had um, th this issue of constant interruptions, okay? So for that particular office, we designed a strategy to have a red light, yellow light, green light. They had little um, signposts on their desks, and when they were busy concentrating and focusing, they put their red light on so nobody would interrupt them. If they were in between things and it's okay to interrupt them, it's on amber, yellow. But when they're free for anyone to come and have conversations with them, they put it on green. So coworkers know that if it's on red, not to bother them. You know, and, and even, every, even not asking, hey, how are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. It's on red because, you know, maybe we've already talked, hey, how are you doing and whatever. But when I need something, I'll wait till, till the light changes and then I, you know, will speak to them That's or send them an email, right? So things around um, appropriate comments and communication, what's okay to say, what's not okay to say, all these are the kinds of boundaries we should have at work. What about friendship? First of all, do you have anything you'd like to add to the workplace For boundaries? For workplace, there's just one more thing that the way of communication, like especially between employers and employees, I hear, I have lots of people approaching me saying that my boss is messaging me after hours on my private cell phone during the weekends and saying that we don't have time like any times off the work we are working a lot like that kind of spirit of let's do the job for me sacrifice your private time for me and stuff like that the the, the worst part is uh, part is approaching them on their personal cell phones not via email yeah. or something a little bit more official right right and of course, it depends on the nature of that association, right? Mm -hmm. So it's so important right from the beginning exactly. for you to establish, right? So, you know, if, if you gave the signal that it's okay exactly. to, you know, have that kind of friendship, or some people are quite opportunistic, Solmas. So they think that the closer I get to the boss, oh, the okay. higher I'll move up you know, in, in the workplace, and then suddenly, when they do get close and there's expectations, they don't like it anymore. Exactly, and the boss is like, okay, you were okay, what happened to you? <laughs> yeah, the, the boss said, wait a minute, what happened? You, you, you were playing the game here and got all the privileges and, you know, everything associated with playing that game, and now suddenly when you're tired of it, you know, oh, it, it's an issue. The boss is so, more experienced. <laughs> so it's, it's very important right from the beginning to just be clear about how important professional boundaries are um, and, you know, how it is that you want to 
establish and execute. You see, when you're working in a team, so much, you could have psychological safety, you could have trust, empathy, closeness, compassion, a communication, but they're your colleagues. They are colleagues at the end of the day. And if something happens to you, or if you leave that place of work, as my grandmother always used to say, no one's going to build the statue of you outside of the building. I love that saying. You said it once more with Charlie, and I love it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody will. It's not going to happen. No, they won't. They won't even remember you. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> it's finished um, soon after. So very important to try and establish that um, friendships. Okay. You know, by the way, we need to do a separate live on friendships. Friendships is yeah, a big... Yeah, I wanted to tell you, Dr. Shahim, if you would know how many, how many messages I received regarding to boundaries for friendship and family, like close family, yes. parents, siblings, people are yes. frustrated and they don't know what to do. They're yeah. just swinging between guilty feeling and keeping them satisfied i know i know and it's 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 a tough balance but so here's here's a few that i've come yeah. across okay in the world of technology and in the digital age boundary number one you do not need to answer every single text message and whatsapp oh. message as soon as someone sends you a message my goodness Chill, relax, wait. <laughs> you know, and they said question marks. Today I was with clients. So you're like, why are you ignoring me? And and yeah. I was on WhatsApp video calling with my clients. So my friend saw I'm I saw it, yeah. I guess it it turned blue. So she's like yeah. question marking. I'm like so for the sake of their God, swallow like just 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 think a little bit. What's happening? No. <laughs> maybe I'm just, in the washroom. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe maybe you know I'm driving. Maybe I'm busy. But it doesn't have to be anything big. Maybe right now I'm not going to answer you, and that should be okay. Maybe I should say that should on be it. okay. And think exactly. About it. You know, to send question mark after question mark to say, why are you ignoring me? That's very aggressive and it's very intrusive. So we need to calm down a little bit, learn to wait, go back to 1995, you know, when you used to <laughs> call people and leave a message. That's okay. It's, 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 <laughs> it's okay to, to do that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So. For example, if you're invited, here's the second one. If you're invited to a certain function, friends should understand you're not going to come all the time. If you don't feel well, if you don't feel like it, you should not go out of your way and out of your well-being to attend a particular party function and so on simply because you're worried about the backlash or the anger or the upset of that individual. Good friends understand. Exactly. Good friends understand when we can't make it to a particular function uh, for whatever reason it is. Dr. Okay? Shahim, I think friends understand. If a yes. person is truly my friend, this this word has yes. so much heaviness. Like it has meaning. meaning. So much meaning. Yeah. yeah. If a person is my friend, a friend needs to understand that sometimes Somas has lots of other stuff in her mind and she can't put them down even if she's sitting at home doing nothing right correct 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 and you good. need to yes just if they call themselves friends that should be enough i agree with you absolutely okay third point if my tank is empty if i'm tired and exhausted please don't expect me to drive you, I'm empty at the moment. So expectations need to shift if there's things going on with friends, right? When circumstances change, if I get into a new relationship, if I start a new job, if I get married, if I have a child, please understand that my boundaries have changed. You know, don't keep saying things to me like, oh, you've changed since you got married, since you started going out with this guy, since you had started having this relationship. They blame the relationship. 
<laughs> all kinds of labels. And then the new relationship becomes demonized. The partner of that person is hated and demonized even before we've had a chance to meet them simply because we think they're now taking our chunk of time from our friend. Who said that's yours? Exactly. That was a privilege in the first place. Correct. And it's a gift. It's a gift to celebrate. It's a gift to, there'll be, you know, when, when relation, it's like a building, Solvas. You know, in Japan, they have lots of earthquakes yeah. and they have the most incredible technology of building foundations under their buildings, under their skyscrapers, that no matter how big the magnitude of the earthquake is, the building just simply knows how to handle the shock and it moves a little bit and it doesn't crumble. Wow. This is where I want our friendships to be, that they're so solid, that they are, the foundation is so strong that I can tell you exactly what I need and exactly how I feel. And you're not going to punish me and you're not going to give me consequences. In fact, you're going to listen to me and say, I'm sorry, you're hurt. You need more time because you just started a relationship. I love that. Go, go get to know each other exactly. better. You know, I don't call you and I say, eh, <laughs> what is that? What is that? Why don't I just call you and say, Sulmas, I miss you. I know. Which one is nicer? Exactly. And I always tell people who are like coming with this kind of critics that think about your own image. That later on, when I'm thinking, oh, I should call like say Maria, who Maria. And I will think, oh my God, the moment I should, I call her, she will start with these critics. Oh, and then you don't want to call her. Oh. And then you don't want to call her simply because of that, right? So, but so unfortunately, you're, not the relationship. you're making it even more difficult and you're showing me this is not a true relationship because I right. don't get good feeling when I'm in touch with you. Yes. And I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking to people in relationships. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about the mothers out there and the fathers out there. Please don't call your children and make them feel guilty. Oh boy. Or if you want to talk more to them and you want to spend more time with them, be the kind of person that they would want to hang out with. I love you. That they would want to spend time with. You, you know, it's, it's, it, if it, it, you're not going to punish them into calling you more, you're not going to guilt trip them into calling you more, but if you have interesting conversations with them and you show interest in their life and in what they're doing and you give them some positive attention rather than saying, oh, again, you're hanging out with these people, they're losers, and this job you have is good for nothing. And why would they want to speak to you? Exactly. A big hug from Toronto to London. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> what is the I'm point? I'm hugging you. What is the point? The what point? is the you're point? You're not so making anything easier. You're not making anything more pleasure. Like... The image, the, the whole image you're making in the, the, your kid's mind is the image of being guilty when they're around you. So they want, they, don't, they just want yeah. to push themselves out of everything. Correct. Oh and you know what, so it was, I would rather have relationships that people, um, you know, are able to feel passion and purpose and joy out of those relationships than to have anybody around me out of obligation. Exactly. No thank you. You know, no thank you. That definitely is not something I would want. Okay, so we said, if you don't appreciate their teasing or their jokes, we need to let them know. If there's an imbalance of give and take, we need to have a boundary. We need to, you know, uh, raise that. It's important. You know, and it's... I say this so was not because anybody is keeping score. You know, I don't want you to think that oh, no. if I call you 10 times and you call me once, that I'm keeping a score of that. No, 
The reason I think it's important we mention it is because you should want more for yourself. Deep down inside, you should deserve to get an equal response from your friends. As much as you give, you should want that back for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't, there's a self-esteem issue. Exactly. If you don't, there's a kind of, you know, um, self-confidence perhaps issue. And there could be a deeper underlying uh, situation that would have to be looked at. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the, the friends should never dictate how you feel. Exactly. So if you're upset about something, you should be able to express it and you should be able to talk about it and to move forward as a result of that. Oh my goodness. Okay. So. We have <laughs> three other areas that we need to go to. This is a master class. This is not a live. <laughs> this is a seminar. <laughs> I okay. really appreciate it. It's, you can't imagine how much information you are giving to people who are really starving to find some solutions or some facts. I know. To I know. Well, I'm here. I'm not in a rush to leave. So if you're okay, shall yeah, we continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, okay. sure. Okay, so we continue. Then we talked about friendships. We, we talked about work and we talked about friendships. Now, let's dive into relationships. Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave family till the end because that's the biggest one. <laughs> okay, that's that, that's the most difficult one. Okay, so relationships. Now, this applies to romantic partnerships. Okay, but it could also be relationships when we're talking about um, other kinds of, you know, uh, relationships that we're in. Um, and both people, when you're in, when you have healthy boundaries, you ask permission from one another, right? You take one another's feelings into account. You show gratitude to each other. You're honest and transparent about what you're feeling. But you also give space to each other to be autonomous mm -hmm. and to be independent. You don't, you're one team, but you're not one person. Exactly. You're one team, but you don't have to be one person. Okay. I want you to imagine when two people are standing in a relationship, there's a dotted line around each person. And then there's a nice big circle around both of them. Uh, They're one team. But they're also th their own people, okay? So you show respect for each other's differences of opinion, perspectives, and feelings. You sit with the other person regularly and you communicate. And you also take responsibility for actions, okay? So when it comes to romantic relationships, again, consistency is very important from the beginning of the relationship. Now, those of you who have a, had a relationship for a long time, I don't want you to think, oh no, I didn't establish boundaries from the beginning, so now it's too late. It is never too late. Never. It is never too late, okay? So be you. To begin with, establishing boundaries in a relationship means you are you, not the version that the other person wants you to be because that's not sustainable. You can't hold that up for a long time okay we get tired of those masks and it's important not to wear masks in relationships so voice your values your likes your dislikes whatever it is i was working with a couple solmas that um for i think i think it was five or six years they would go to the same restaurant every week and after five years finally the guy said I hate that place. <laughs> I never want to go to it again. I hated it from the beginning. I can't stand it. And I only went there because of you. And now I'm, I'm, I'm not coming out with you anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, this extreme reaction, because this is what happens so much. Yeah. If you repress these feelings, you either explode exactly. or you implode if you throw it inside. You have panic attacks or anxiety or you get depression, you implode or you start engaging in passive aggressive behaviors to try and get back at the person oh. through indirect ways. Exactly. That's right. 
So if you don't, if you're not straightforward to somebody and you don't talk to them, what do you do? You avoid their calls, exactly. right? That's passive aggression. That's passive. Exactly. Okay. So <clears throat> in relationships, it's important to raise concerns early and often. Um, so, and, and so that you're able to communicate about those boundaries and that you're able to resolve conflicts effectively. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with having conflict in relationships. In fact, conflicts bring you closer to each other. When you have arguments and conflicts, you get to know each other better. It's that people don't know how to resolve conflict. They sweep it under the rug or they leave these open loops of indecision or unresolved issues and that's what causes long-term damage in relationships. Yeah, exactly. You need closure. You need that kind of, exactly. I apologize for what I did to you. I validate that it hurt you. I will not do it again. And let's move strong forward stronger together. Exactly. A kind of clarification. What's going on in my mind? What's going on in your mind? Let's figure it out. Bravo. Bravo. Clarif clarification is everything. So. You also need boundaries around sexual and romantic intimacy. We talked about this a little bit. Um, so, you know, I'll give you an example. In some relationships, uh, one couple might use sex as a way of making up after a conflict, after an argument. And the other person maybe isn't ready to have sex if, if she's still upset or if he's still upset. Needs and time, there it's time to heal to sit on it to see what happens maybe maybe but to the other person they think that having physical intimacy or sex is their way of apologizing or it's their way of you know making everything okay again but you need to talk about that because you may be crossing certain boundaries that hurt people um if they don't operate in the same mannerisms exactly. right and then um in a relationship you have a right to change your mind healthy boundaries means maybe two years ago i made a decision about this and but today i've changed my mind and i feel safe enough to be able to discuss this with you and to talk about it and that could include you know my opinion about people about certain activities about places and and things like that you know that we should feel comfortable uh, to raise and to revise and to discuss with one another, right? Any other boundaries you can think of in relationships? No, I think you covered pretty everything. The fact that we, yeah. can, we can revisit on our boundaries and from time to time to yes. see, is it, do they still work? Do we need to make some exactly. modification, changes? That, that's the best part of yeah. it. It's not written exactly. on stone, right? Yeah. And so almost one of the biggest issues um, culturally we have in relationships is the interference from in-laws. Yep. The relationship. Now, that's a whole other separate discussion um, that we will have in the near future. Are you moving but I will, family now because it's time? <laughs> what, say that again? Right now, it's the time that you talk about the family boundaries because in-laws, my dear. <laughs> yeah. Yes, correct, correct. It's 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 a big it's a big uh, oh, wow. central focus, isn't it? Um, oh my God. And unfortunately, because of you know the cultural programming that has taken place um the idea that i could validate my partner's feelings you see i can validate your feelings i can tell my partner your right to be hurt by my family member i can validate their feeling and i can agree with my partner that what my family said and did was inappropriate and at the same time so it was i could still love and respect and adore my family with incredible intensity these two can coexist wow. culturally we haven't learned that these two can coexist we think the minute i agree with my partner or say that yes you're right my mother was wrong 
that means I'm loving my mother or respecting her less. I'm not. I'm not. But if I'm going to grow and nurture my relationship, if we're going to be one team, if it's me and you and the family against the world, you know, not against the world, but that sort of team that you have, you've got to be able to validate feelings for each other and still love and respect your family. Exactly. It, it, they're not in contradiction with one another. No, they're not. Okay? So, when it comes to family, why is this tough? Why is this tough? Well, from a psychological perspective, I'll tell you the number one reason why it's tough. Sometimes it's tough because parents failed to treat us as adults even when we have become adults. Oh, boy. Okay? So, the Western, Western societies are better at this, but they're not totally immune to it either. Okay? Yeah. But the thing is, even linguistically, um, I know, I know. You, you know, it's the, the child, like, we don't say a 35-year-old, my my you say that's my son, right, or my daughter in English, right? Whereas in, in, in other languages, the terminology. And what happens is because parents sometimes still treat their sons and daughters like children, we regress back to being 12 years old when we're around them. It's like we, okay. we go to that programming. We go to that programming. We go. We regress back to that age of being told what to do, how to do, why to do, <laughs> when to do. And it, in a way, we think, do I even have a right to argue with this? Do I, do I have a voice in this scenario or situation? So we shrink psychologically and, and we regress back to the time in which... As parents, we have a responsibility to treat our adult kids, our, our adult children, sons and daughters, as adults. That means asking them their opinions, engaging them in decision-making, asking them how they feel about certain exactly. things. So I'm going to share with you a timeline thing that I think will be effective here. Okay. This I came across this from a super granny her name is super granny she's from south africa and she split up the role of the parents with children into um one unconditional sergeant general teacher coach friend into five different stages wow okay, okay. and she said at the beginning from the time the infant comes into this world until about a year and a half smother them with love and attention and unconditional, you know, giving as much as you can. Okay. When they hit around one and a half, two, that's when you need to become like Sergeant General. Rules and regulations, and they have to understand their boundaries very clearly. So from two to about 10 years old, nine or 10, you've got to be strict and consistent and establish those boundaries and rules. Then from 10 to about 14, 15, you're like a teacher. That's when you're imparting wisdom, lessons, you're checking for understanding, you're, you're, you're giving them all the information and the tools that they need to be able to survive in the world. Mm -hmm. Then from 15 to about 2021, 20, you become like a coach. You're still guiding them and you're still you know, addressing their issues. But you are also including them as a partner in these discussions so that they too give and take in terms of how they see the world, mm -hmm. what would they like to study, what, what are their preferences in terms of sports, and so on and so forth. You're not deciding for them. And then what happens after 21 you, onwards? You leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> You you, you, you try and become <laughs> you try and become more friends with them, right? That's when you establish a friendship. Now here's the problem. If you try to become friends too quick with them at the age of twelve or nine or fourteen, 
you've got issues. Yeah. If you try to be Sergeant General to a 30 year old, guess what? They're not going to come around and yeah. see you very much because you've got the order wrong. Yeah, it should be. And why do we have difficulty establishing boundaries with parents is because they treat us in a way in which we feel like we're, we're not able to. Exactly. The, so the, it's the controlling thing. They, they, they just want it, to feel that they're still entitled. and Yes. Yeah, that was very yeah. powerful. Wow. This, so this, there's this. a number of different stages, right, that you can and you have to adhere to. So to begin with, how do establishing boundaries with parents look? First of all, if parents try to shape who we are, based on their own belief systems and based on their understanding of the world. That's crossing boundaries. What parents need to do is provide us with all the information and teach us critical thinking. They need to teach us how to think, not what to think. Parents in schools need to teach children how to think, not what to think. That's a form of, you know, brainwashing. And in fact, we have to help them think for themselves. When, when parents should not say that this is the only way, the right way, and the way that you should do it. You should offer choices and you should offer options to children to be able to, and to adult children, you know, so that they know that there's other ways of doing things and other ways of forming their opinion. When their way is the only way or the right way and you don't feel like you have a right to design your path or to design your destiny, that can cause lots of problems in the future. So, for example, you know, Solmas, I've worked in universities all my life and I can't tell you how many kids would start at the age of 18 or 19 and they would choose a major that their mother and father have forced them to choose and they're getting f's and d's you know they're doing so poorly in this subject and until they're brave enough to have the conversation with their family to say i hate this subject i i really i have i'm not good at it i don't like it can i please switch majors sometimes they wouldn't even tell their parents they would switch their majors and guess what grades they would start getting? A's, top marks, A's and B. And they're happy and flourishing and, you know, able to really thrive as a result of, of that. So let's not, you know, our kids are not supposed to be a new version of ourselves exactly. to shape. Just, you know, they really need to be who they are. So we don't push our opinions and feelings onto them. Um, family need to have boundaries around our relationships. You know, if they're not accepting your partner, that means they're rejecting you. So it doesn't matter. You know, they didn't choose your, your partner. You chose your partner. They, they, they inherit the partner. It's not important, exactly. you know, um, how they feel about that. So I, you know, for family members who are here, remember, every time you're rejecting your friend or your family member's partner, uh, you're rejecting them. Uh, and, and, and that is a very difficult place to be in. Now, Solmas, remember, the things that we are talking about here are on the continuum. We're talking about healthy situation exactly. i'm not talking about you know if a teenager is involved with drugs and um dangerous behaviors 100%. that the parents should have the boundaries and things like that let's make it very clear yeah. you know or if my friend starts dating someone who i think is dangerous or not good for them of course i would voice my concern but i'm talking about you know the more day-to-day -day life day-to-day -day life. correct <laughs> yes okay parents um, about also things to do with getting dragged in the middle of arguments. You know, if you trust family members with certain secrets uh, and you establish a boundary that, you know, if I'm telling my brother this or my sister, that they shouldn't go tell the whole, the rest of the family, right. uh, that this is, that they keep that confidential. Um, it's mostly trust. Mostly trust established there. Family should have boundaries about how you dress, 
about how you look, about your weight, about the furniture and design of your house. You know, you don't need to comment or interfere uh, about such things just because your family members have different tastes or about preferences. How doesn't mean about how you're bringing up your kids. Um, that's another thing. Uh, right. Many, many fam yes. uh, families have issue with, right? They want to right. they have yep. a they have way of just being with their kids, do's and yes. like obligations or whatever they have there in their family and the grandparents yes. just interfere yes. with that. Correct, yeah. correct. Um, and, and, you know, they get it, they interfere with that and it can cause problems even in your marriage or in oh, your relationship okay. when, or that, when that happens, right? That's it doesn't just stop problem. with that. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Do we call them in-laws or do we call them outlaws? <laughs> you know, what are they called? These, but, but I'll be honest with you, when you do have boundaries and you work together, I think in-laws can be some of the most beautiful and, and supportive uh, individuals. I think that they have received a very bad reputation, um, you know, and we have this sort of, stereotype that it can't be good but of course it can be beautiful exactly. and it can be it can, it can be very very close and you know the the the, the structure of establishing boundaries so much is the same regardless of all of these things that we've talked about it's very simple it starts with self-awareness who am i what are my priorities can i or can i not do something to be certain about that, and then to very confidently voice that concern and say, you know how much I love spending time with you. You know how important you are to me, but I can't come this Saturday. Uh, and, you know, don't over explain or give too many excuses. Exactly. But at the same time, you know what I mean? You just say it like it is, and we'll try and make up for it another time. But Here's a mistake so much a lot of people make. After being totally accommodating and totally available, they suddenly disappear. Or they try and establish boundaries too harshly. I know. Suddenly, too quickly. It's you know, the in the two middle sides of, the, of it extreme, right? They are either, either so giving, 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 and then the, suddenly they disappear from their loved one's life. You no, know, it doesn't, right? It doesn't work that way. Remember, establishing boundaries set you free. And you cannot set yourself free and others through a revolution. It has to be done through an evolution. Golden. 